Hello everyone, welcome back to Fins and Whiskers. If you're new here, make sure you boop the subscribe button and the snoot and we'll get on to the video. So in today's video, we are going to go over how to take care of older gerbils. Now, my gerbils passed away before I could truly begin the process of taking care of them in their older age. They did unfortunately pass during the beginning stages of being elders. But I had already prepared for them and also made many notes that I'd love to share with you guys on how to prepare to take care of them. Gerbils become seniors when they are three to five years old. And while they might not change much in appearance, there are still things to pay attention to more intently than before. First and foremost, and probably one of the most important things to watch out for when they become older is you're gonna want to keep an eye on the hierarchy. In the wild, gerbils establish clans with assigned roles in order to make a living. Some of these roles include being a leader, a scout, and an architect, which is a term that I have adopted just by observing almond. Now, these clans are very regulated with no exceptions to gerbils in captivity as many of their natural instincts still appear to this day. Now, I do have a video on gerbil behavior and I go more into depth on their roles in their clans, so I recommend watching it and I will link it above. But on that subject, we do get older and what we experience is never symmetrical. Every living thing ages differently and it is beyond our control. Likewise, gerbils can show weakness, enough for other gerbils to challenge the hierarchy. If you have had your gerbils for years at this point, you should be able to tell what roles they have settled in. Depending on how many gerbils you have, some may have adopted two roles instead of one, which is a situation quite common in pairs. Now, I can only offer what beanie, lemon, and almond have displayed for us, but I can assure you that they are very strong examples. Without knowing their behavior over time, we would not be able to tell them apart because they are identical triplets. I wrote that in the present, so I guess I should say were. Beanie had been the leader since I adopted them when they were two months old. It is probably one of the most easiest roles to distinguish because of how defined it means to be one. A leader in the gerbil world takes care of their clan with courage and bravery, pursuing the unknown and indulging in the unclock and indulging in the accomplishments. A lot of people want to be a leader. It is a powerful role to claim. And gerbils can be persuaded in the glory of becoming one. If the current leader has taken a harder hit in old age in comparison to the other gerbils, one of them may challenge the leader in order to claim the new status. This can lead to fighting. So it is very important for you to recognize the order beforehand. You will need to be able to identify the these roles so that if anything seems to be off, you can take precautious measures to avoid an ugly physical competition. Now we can't watch our gerbils 24-7, but we can eliminate situations where they would be very fond of taking advantage of. In captivity, food will be the largest component of wanting to have more of than the other gerbils. Make sure you are always sprinkling the food around instead of keeping it in a dish. They also have to search for the food, so it is likely that they will run off to eat the favorites that they find in the moment that you have fed them. Gerbils don't have cheek pouches like hamsters do, so it would be hard for them to hoard food. If you notice any hoarding in the chambers of their tunneling system, you might be feeding too much or too often. For three gerbils, I had fed them three tablespoons every two days, and I would spread out those three tablespoons in the morning, noon, and night. Another thing you can do to keep the hierarchy at bay is to keep their area spacey and breathable. Probably nothing shy of extreme paranoia. I have read and watched many experiences where people had to separate their gerbils, what the fights were like, and what caused them. While I can't assure 100% safety, even in the most luxurious of the environment for gerbils, we can have a base 
basis on what we learn from them. Try not to have any areas where the gerbils can trap one another or try to defend the territory. This includes small tunnels like plastic tubes, and especially if those tubes are being used as the only separation or divider as access to the other parts of the enclosure. If you have the time, wait for them to finish their food before you leave them alone. The only dishes I had used in their enclosure was for their water and their salad. And remember, before getting gerbils, before deciding to get more than a pair, if the time comes that they have fought, it is easier to separate two gerbils rather than more. Unless you can be prepared for anything and everything. The reason I had three gerbils was so that one wouldn't be alone if another one had passed. And in my situation, two passed at the same time, so that didn't really work out. <laughs> now that was a long section, but now we're moving on on what else to do for your older gerbils, and that is to observe their physical health. With old age comes a decline in health, no matter how healthy of a lifestyle we maintain, it is inevitable that we will someday lose our loved ones. What matters is that we do the best we can to assure that they live a long and complete life, fulfilled with the best care. Make sure you are checking their weight, respiratory system, make sure they're breathing properly, eyesight, and basically all of their motor skills. Check their responses, their fur, bumps or lumps that could be a tumor, and anything that you can think of that may occur. Some things can be treated with a vet, and the quicker that you discover these things, the better chance you have of saving your fur babies. The next thing you want to do is start putting savings towards a vet fund even more than before. Don't ever put off going to see a vet if you notice something that is of concern. Time and time again, I get comments that list a whole bunch of things that they are concerned about with their gerbil, and all I can say is go to a vet. Share these concerns with a vet because they are the ones that are going to be able to help you and your gerbil and do so physically, which is the most important part and you never know what it could be follow that instinct and never try to treat the unknown by yourself we are not professionals we do not have the right tools or experienced knowledge to treat them so don't pretend even for a second because it could be a second too late another thing you want to do is to research a potentially new dietary plan as older gerbils need slightly less protein than growing gerbils or adult gerbils. And the last thing to do for your older gerbils is to spend more time appreciating them. This is a hard one. We can never prepare to say goodbye. And with the wide gap of their lifespan being three to five years, we never know if we'll have to say goodbye at the age of three or four or five or maybe even longer. <laughs> However, we can also be unlucky and receive the short end of the life expectancy as we did with Beanie, Lemon, and Almond. Make sure you know that they have everything they need and more. During this time, they need to feel safe, comfortable, and spend the rest of their time in solace. You won't be able to give them their favorite treats as much as before, but you can give them treats in other ways. Keep their bedding full and clean, be on top of their feeding schedule, and do things you know they love. It is very likely that they won't pass at the same time. However, again, as I wrote this when they were presently alive, I did not expect almond and lemon to pass at the same time so that can happen too <laughs> but in the case that one is left alone you'll want to make sure that you can be there for them a little more closely than before if they accept you as a social companion and they don't mind your company or they like your company always be there for them in ways that they accept if they don't want you to touch them or carry them, just don't do it. Witnessing their outstanding lives is a privilege. So remember to show your gratitude. 
and be there for you too. Coping can be very difficult, but make sure you take care of yourself too. Remember what you were able to give them and remember that even when it hurts to lose them, they will always be a part of you. A great one that deserves recognition. But that is it for this video. I hope you found it informative. And if you have any questions, any questions at all, always feel free to leave a comment down below. Let us know some of your tips for taking care of older gerbils and I'll see you guys in the next video.